Farm Credit is a um, financial services organization set up by the federal government. Uh, it's kind of a quasi-governmental en entity specifically focused on providing financial services to farms um, and, and, and doing things that traditional banks or banks traditionally have not been willing or able to do. Um, in addition to what you would con consider traditional products, lending, loans, leases, we also have a consulting practice, which is where Keith and I come in, providing uh, farm consulting uh, to businesses, uh, farm businesses that are trying to get off the ground or introduce new products or introduce new, new ways of, of farming or innovation or processes, uh, estate, man you know, estate planning, uh, farm transition, things of those nature. We also have a um, tax and record keeping service, payroll, uh, things of that nature as well. So the first thing that I'm going to talk about, uh, who's heard of the five C's? This first section, Keith is going to talk more about business planning, but what I'm going to talk about is how, is a, how does a banker view you? And how does a banker view your business? What are they looking for? What, how are they approaching uh, their conversation with you? And what they're really thinking about are these five things. They're thinking about character, capacity, which are your earnings, your capital, which is your assets and your debt, the collateral that you're able to offer on a deal, and what conditions we can put around it to make it a safe investment for the bank. Character. Character is about trust. It's about all these things, honesty, integrity, uh, management ability, good decision-making ability. Here's the thing, though. As a banker, I'm going to meet you probably twice maybe once at your place, once at my place, maybe two or three times, maybe socially a little bit. Not really a good way for me to get a full assessment of, of your character. So how am I gonna base, what am I gonna base my character decision on? A couple things. One, I'm gonna look at your team. I'm gonna look at who your accountant is, I'm gonna look at who your attorney is, and I'm gonna look at who your financial advisors are and your management team. And that's gonna tell me a lot about your business. I'm going to look at your credit score. And the credit score becomes some, one of the single most important things that I look at to tell me what type of person you are. So I would tell you, before talking to a bank, understand this. Understand what your credit score is, your payment history, how long you've had account opens, uh, tax, uh, tax liens, suits, judgments, bankruptcies. Uh, how many new accounts have you applied for? Uh, how are you using those accounts? Who's inquired about your credit in the last three, four months? Have you filled out 9,000 credit applications trying to get a loan from anywhere? How much do you owe? If there are issues with your credit that you are aware of, be prepared to talk about them. Be prepared to be upfront and honest about them and, and include them in the conversation because this credit score becomes a pretty critical piece of the application process. Capital. This is the balance sheet. Um, the balance sheet is very simple. It's a snapshot. It takes everything you own and subtracts everything you owe. And what's left is basically the worth of the business. Okay? It demonstrates your ability to withstand adversity over a period, of, a long period of time, it actually can track the growth of the company. And what I like the best is, not only does it track the growth of the company, but it tells me where you put your profits. When you're earning money, are you taking the money out? Are you putting it back into the business? Are you expanding the business? Are you building a war chest of reserves? It, it says a lot about the business. So balance sheets become a very, very useful tool. You should be completing one every year whether your banker asks for it or not. Because again, just for the reasons that I talked about, how it can be clear for you and what it means, how you can actually track the growth of your company, and you can actually see where the opportunities for your company are by going through that exercise. Um, and this is pretty basic stuff, so I'll be quick with this, but 
types of assets. And, and this isn't so much about, the purpose of this is not so I can help you fill out your balance sheet. But I want you to start thinking about your business in terms of operating versus fixed, both in the way of assets and in the way of liabilities. So what do you own in your business? What's part of your business that is easily convertible to cash, right? Your supplies, your feed, your inventory, your checking accounts, your cash accounts. What might you be able to liquidate if you had to? You know, machinery and equipment. And then what have you invested in the long term, which you're really not going to liquidate unless you're terminating the business? And think about that mix of assets. Do you have the right mix of assets? Or, you know, you hear the expression land rich and cash poor, right? Uh, but obviously, these are the assets you need to run your business and think about how this is structured. How do you get these without depleting this? Because running the operations is what you need to do on a day-to-day -day basis. Same thing with liabilities. You have liabilities that are due within the same year, right, that you're borrowing short-term with variable interest rates. There's money that you borrow in the intermediate term, and then there's long-term mortgages. And as a banker, the one thing that I would stress that we were really appreciative of is when you come and you say, I need a loan, you need to understand what type of loan you need and what you need it for, okay? Um, here's some examples. Short term, we'll call short term something you repay in a year versus a long term capital loan, which is what you pay over a couple years. Um, greenhouse repairs. Short-term or long-term loan? Greenhouse repairs, barn repairs, structural, you know, things that are fixed assets and long-term, and things that you don't normally, I mean, you know, there may be some minor greenhouse repairs with the irrigation system that you make every year, but let's take a barn, for example. You're only replacing the roof once every 20 years, right? That's really a long-term asset. That's a long-term a barn is a long-term asset and you can pay for that over time. Now, on the other side, how about tractor repairs? That is short. And the reason that's short is, this is that depreciation word that you keep hearing about. And one thing Keith and I are both gonna stress is, depreciation is real. I know your accountants put it on their tax return and it's not cash out of your pocket, but it is a real expense because that tractor that's sitting out in your field one day is gonna to need to be replaced. And you need to start thinking about the cost of that down the road. So you're gonna be making repairs every single year. That's just the cost of doing business and that gets factored into an, an operating short-term cycle. What about cows? Movable, relatively cheap and expensive. This is actually a long-term asset, right? Because it's gonna be producing revenue for you over a period of time. Uh, and here's a trick one. How about last year's bills? How about you get all your bills from December and you look at your checking account and you don't have enough money to pay for them. If you're taking out a loan for last year's bills, is that a short-term or a long-term? Okay, it depends. And here's why it depends. If, I'll use the same example before I look at Keith. Keith is my grain farmer, right? So Keith right now at home probably have, well, I should ask you, do you have silos? You, you, are, you, how, are your silos full? About, about one and a half trailer load left in, left in, of soybeans left in the bin. You're doing a good job. You're moving that stuff. Um, Prices are not staying high. <laughs> <laughs> so if you have bills and you still have revenue, you still have, inventory or maybe people owe you money from last year that you're trying to collect, that's a short-term loan. But if at the end of the year you've, you've sold all your goods, you've collected all your money, you just had a loss, you're just short, you just don't have enough money to pay the bills, that becomes long-term. And if you, if, you think, if you keep thinking about it in terms of short-term, you're never going to catch up because you're gonna borrow operating money for 2013 to pay 2012 expenses. And you're just gonna keep digging a, a bigger and bigger hole for yourself. So understanding, understanding the types of loans and how they're used becomes important. Hey Tim, could you back up? I wanna just make a couple points on that. The way I help 
keep things straight in my mind on the repairs issue is I use actually two different terms. I use maintenance and I use repairs. Maintenance are things that, you know, changing oil in your tractor, that's maintenance. Engine goes out, that's a major repair because we're going to expect that to be a, and if we had to borrow money for that, that's something we're going to capitalize over a couple of years. Greenhouse, you know, major renovation, new heater, new heating system, that's a repair that we capitalize over a few t years. Replacing some plug nozzles, that's maintenance, that's something we do every year. And then that last year's bills, you'll see that on your, on your balance sheet. When you compare one year to the other, it's still on the balance sheet. It's just moved down on the balance sheet from current liability to intermediate. So the, the effect on your net worth is the same. What increases your net worth? We're still talking about capital here. So instead of net worth, all right, if, if this is a concept that you know, maybe is new to you, let's think of it this way. What drives growth in your business? How does your business grow? What creates growth? Profitable production. You're selling products. You're, you're, you have inventory. You're, you're creating customers. Um, you're generating cash. That's going to grow your business. Your assets increase in value, right? Um, and it could be anywhere from the property of your land goes up to the price of corn goes up, right? But Whatever assets you have on your books are increasing in value. That helps drive growth. Um, you get infusion of cash from another source, gifts, inheritance, things like that. That can provide capital for you. Uh, and on the other side, people can give you money. People can also forgive your debt. And that helps drive the business as well. On the flip side, what hurts the business? What detracts from the growth? Okay you're not selling enough product, you're not charging the right price, right? Losses come from, there's only a few ways to create losses, right? And that is either you're not selling enough or you're not selling enough at the right price. Um, your assets could be decreasing in value. We talked about depreciation. Depreciation can sneak up on you if you don't pay attention to it. And all of a sudden you have an entire fleet of vehicles that need to be replaced that you haven't been paying attention to family draws, and sunk capital. So that's kind of the capital piece. The other half of the kind of, when we talk about financial statements, you have you know, your assets and liabilities on one side, and then the other piece is your income statement and, and what you're earning. So there's different pieces of this. Um, your income statement is one piece. Your cash flow is another. Cash flow is Cash flow looks at the time of all, first of all, it looks at a couple things. One, it looks at all the sources of, of, of cash, all right? Whereas an income statement is just about what you sell. Cash flow will look at loans you take, investors that you take. And what I really like about cash flow is it looks at timing, right? And timing becomes so important. It's, it's one thing to say, I'm going to manage my business. Here's what I'm going to sell. Here's what I spend. I'm making money. I'm done. No, because there's another piece of this, right? The timing, right? When do I need to spend money and when do I collect money? And then there's the issue of am I, do I have the right terms with my suppliers, right? Am I negotiating the right terms? Am I borrowing the right amount of money from my bank? Do I have a plan to pay that back? Do I know when I'm going to be receiving revenue? And am I doing a good job once I record the sale? Am I doing a good job? Here's the other piece that I think, you know, what I see as, as a lender, things that kind of slip through the cracks. Some people have great sales. They do a great job selling. But what they don't do a great job is collecting. And people will owe them money, and it sits out there. And when you're in, a, when you're in agriculture, and you got big bills at one point and you wait a long time before that revenue comes in, you can't afford to have that revenue sit out any longer. You need to collect that cash. That becomes very important. Projections are important. Um, you need to consider your debt obligations. Um, and really all these things, looking at the, these things will help you right size the scope and scale of your business, right? Because Cash is a resource, like anything else. It's like feed, it's like chemicals, it's like fertilizer, it's a resource. It's going to limit your growth in your business.
now we talk about collateral. Collateral is very important for the bank. The bank needs to know that its investment is protected. We'll talk a little later about types of investment. A bank is a loan. It's not an equity investment. They are looking, they, they don't want any of the upside of your business, but they don't want any downside. They want to recover their capital and a reasonable rate of return. So they're going to look to protect their investment through collateral. It's going to be their backstop for this. And it's going to be appraised, it's going to be valued by an appraiser, and it's going to be fair market value. One thing I'd like to say, um, fair market value. Don't get confused, but there's a difference between book value and fair market value. Okay? What an accountant is going to do is say, for tax purposes, you buy a tractor and you're going to depreciate it over time and over a five year or seven year or three year, that, that, that asset is going to be worth zero. So when someone says, well, what's your machinery equipment worth? Don't look at your tax return, okay? Don't look at your accountant prepared statement because what you want to think about is what's the market value. Right? And, and two ways to look at market value. One is, if I, were to, if I had a tractor and I was to sell it to Keith, what's that tractor worth? Okay? That's fair market value. The other way I want to think about my assets are, if I didn't have that tractor, what would my revenues look like? Okay? What would my business, what does that equipment mean to me in terms of real revenues to my business? And the last one is conditions. Now we talked about, you know, you're going to go in, you're going to apply for a loan. Um, a number of things can happen, right? Maybe you didn't have a really profitable year last year. Maybe you have a lot of debt and your assets have depreciated a little bit and it's not, you know, you don't have a really strong balance sheet. Maybe you have some credit marks, some credit history issues to deal with. Um, um, What's the other one? Maybe the collateral isn't as strong as you would like it to be. Now, if all four of those things happen, that's a different story. Now, maybe, maybe the bank isn't the place for you. But if you're weak in any one of those areas, this is where conditions can, can help out, right? A banker will, will think creatively about, well, what if I limit the amount of equipment a farm can, can, uh, can purchase? What if I um, ask for personal guarantees? What if I um, ask for a co-signer or a co-borrower? Those are some of the things to think about.